In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do a magma chamber simulator run when assimilation is involved. So first, we need to open up the magma chamber simulator. We also need to open up a terminal window. We can navigate to our documents folder, then to the MCS folder, and into the MCS VBL code folder, and open up the magma chamber simulator. Remember, we want to enable macros. We also need to navigate to make sure the MCS folder is selected at the top of the final pop-up window, and then click Choose. Again, this is a workaround for security between the Mac operating system and Excel, and it's necessary. We also need to make sure that we have two terminal windows open. So you can open up a second tab like that by using Command T. I find that there's no real need to have separate windows open uh, when you can have separate tabs open. Uh, we need two tabs, one for the Walrock subsystem and one for the Magma subsystem. If we are doing an RAFC run where you're using all three subsystems, you're going to want three different tabs open. One for the Recharge, one for the Magma, and one for the Walrock subsystems. Now something else that you'll remember from the FC only tutorial is that going between Excel and the batch terminal window can be a bit finicky. So if you are in the batch terminal window and you need to get back to Excel, uh, make sure that you're clicking somewhere in the region of the title first, and then click on what you need to in Excel. Otherwise, Excel will freeze up and you might have to restart it. So for step one, we're going to put the terminal command window prompts into our batch terminal windows. Uh, for this model, we're going to be running version 1.2.0. Uh, but let's say, uh, let's say we want to run 1.1.0 instead. Uh, we're not going to actually paste the text. But you'll notice that after we change the batch terminal, the Magma Chamber Simulator tells you, hey, you've changed this, by the way, and melts will reset. Uh, we can go ahead and put it back. So change it back to 1.2.0. And we can, again, click on the Put in Clipboard button to paste the batch terminal text to the clipboard. And come over here to the batch terminal window and Command V to paste. Now again, to get back to the terminal command window, or get back to Excel from the terminal command window, you want to click somewhere in the region of this title. And then we can click on the second put in clipboard button and paste that text in. Close out this user form. And again, the Magma Chamber Simulator is telling us, by the way, we've switched versions of Melts again, and now we are certain we have been set at version 1.2.0. Okay, the next step is to select our MES input file and do an output file name. So we can make our output file name AFC Tutorial. And we want to choose our existing MES input file. That's MES underscore AFC underscore one. Click finish. And that will upload our MES input file. Okay, so prior to right now, all of our steps with the exception of the wall rock, uh, the second wall rock terminal, have been the exact same as for an FC only run. Uh, this is the part that's a little bit different. So the when we consider wall rock using the magma chamber simulator, the MCS wants to know all of the conditions of the wall rock subsystem before it actually does the run. And that's what this wall rock find solidus step is. You're essentially finding out everything about the wall rock subsystem before doing your actual MCS run. So to start out, we need to click on the button for step three, find the wall rock solidus.
and you'll notice that we have activity now over here in the batch terminal in the wall rock batch terminal not the rechart or not the magma batch terminal During this step, you'll also see that there's a graph showing liquid percent remaining in the wall rock subsystem versus temperature, as well as those numbers given up here, and those do update automatically. This is now finished, and it tells us that, hey, at our FM0, which is 5%, uh, the closest that the MCS can get to that, the closest equilibration step occurs at 750 degrees, where we're at 4.07% liquid. Click OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to expand this right now to make it more visible so we can see what's going on a little bit more. And now that we've done that find wall rock step, now we can run the magma chamber simulator. If you're not sure what step is next, you can check down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It tells us that the wall rock find solidus step is complete, and step four, run MCS, is next. Now, right now, it's just undergoing fractional crystallization. Uh, I can tell this because I'm looking over here at the match magma batch terminal, and I see the little wheel spinning that tells me that it's calculating and that there's movement, but I'm not going to click on it. I would just rather not click on anything because I don't want to mess anything up. Up here, if you want to watch these numbers, uh, the wall rock temperature is given on the right and you can watch that change as the magma cools that wall rock is going to heat up uh, here the percentage of liquid accumulating in the wall rock is given uh, when it says na that means that the wall rock is still entirely solid it's below the solidest composition or the solidest temperature and so there is no liquid there at the point where you cross the solidus but you're below the value set for fm0 it will say soft coupled and then once you hit above that FM0 threshold, you'll start to have percentages given here. And a simulation has just been triggered. I can tell that because both of these batch terminal windows now have movement. You can see there's actually some movement in the wall rock terminal window right now. So at each equilibration step now, the magma chamber simulator will calculate the amount of liquid that's been accumulating in the wall rock subsystem. Any difference between FM0 and whatever amount of liquid is in that subsystem will be transferred to the magma subsystem at the end of that equilibration step and then the new magma composition will be calculated. And when we go through the output file for this run you can see that uh, you can see each AFC step is given. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because we have a ways to go until thermo equilibration is reached between the magma and wall rock subsystems. Okay, so we should be pretty close to thermal equilibration. The temperature of our magma has reached 896 degrees and our wall rock is at 862. So they're pretty darn close. It shouldn't take too long for this run to finish. and it's done. 
So our magma and wall rock subsystems have reached thermal equilibration. Our run has completed. We can click OK. And we want to export our run results. Now we can go ahead and close out the magma chamber simulator. Remember, do not save. And that completes that run. The final thing I want to show you in this tutorial is another function of the magma chamber simulator. So we're gonna go ahead and open it back up. You can leave the batch terminal windows as they are, unless melts has crashed for some reason. You can probably get away with two or three runs out of them before I stop them clear terminal out, completely exit the program, and then put new ter batch terminal windows up. So let's say that for your next run, uh, you've completed that run, but now you want to know what might happen if the initial temperature of the wall rock were a little bit different. Uh, you don't want to have to go through the same thing every single time and find the wall rock conditions every single time if the wall rock conditions haven't changed. That means that if your pressure hasn't changed, if your FO2 hasn't changed, if the composition of the wall rock hasn't changed, and if your FM0 hasn't changed, any of those parameters that are involved in that wall rock find solidus step have to stay the same. But things like the initial amount of the wall rock and the initial wall rock temperature, those can change and you can actually just do this wall rock hack where you can impose the last wall rock solution. So let's go ahead and change some of those parameters. In our input and output folder, let's open that MES file and let's change the initial temperature of our wall rock. Let's raise it to 600 degrees. Now I'm not interested in doing the whole run all over again uh, just for the purposes of this video. I just want to demonstrate that this does work. So we're gonna use this hard stop melt, mass and magma, and I'm gonna stop the run when there's 75% liquid. Of course, that means assimilation won't happen, but I can demonstrate the wall rock hack. So I don't need to go through step one since our batch terminal windows are already full. I can name this output file. Let's try AFC underscore three alt. And I'm gonna input my changed MES file now. Of course, you don't even actually have to change anything. You can even do the same run over again and just use this alternate step three. So as before where we would use this step three button, now we're going to use the alternate step three button. And now the magma chamber simulator is telling us that, oh, hey, a uh, little while ago you had this solution. Uh, we're going to use this same solution and then after that, go ahead and run the magma chamber simulator in the normal way using step four. And it gives us the same wall rock prime information as it did for the prior run. And now we can run the MCS again. All right, and that concludes this tutorial on an assimilation and fractional crystallization run for the magma chamber simulator. In our next tutorial, we'll be going through how to run a simulation for recharge and fractional crystallization.